from the deep dark reaches of Star Trek Online comes Nicodus, Tabitha, and Grebog with another episode of Fleet Action Report. Hello viewers and welcome to Fleet Action Report, the show where we don't just play the game but we teach you how to play the game. That was Nicodus, I'm Tabitha, and over there yonder is Grebog. This is episode 163, Transforming Your Gear with Upgrades. Uh, if you'd like to support us, you can go to coffee.com slash Grebog, or, or it's spelled ko-fi.com slash G-R-E-B-O-G. All right. I, hey, I, yeah, I was going to do this, and now I remember. Okay, let's get a die out. Uh, why don't you pick high? Why don't you pick low? <laughs> What about you? What about mid? Uh, if mid? it's mid, it's me. All oh. right. Uh, I'll take high. I'll take low. Let's see. Do I want a D20 or do I actually? Yeah, let's go with the D20. That, that's the. Have. Hey, it's a 20. So high goes first. <laughs> All righty. I guess that's me. <laughs> Can't get any higher than 20. Um, I, I've been playing a lot a lot of Baldur's Gate 3, and I still have yet to beat that game, uh, although I just got to the gate. So I'm in Act 3, and I think that's the final act. Don't quote me on that. Um, so I've been doing a lot with that. I did. I, I decided that I didn't like my character that I started off with, so I actually deleted my original save and, excuse me, created a new character. Um, because I, I picked the Dark Urge uh, as my starting character and decided I didn't want to do that. So um, the, the Dark Urge is interesting, um, but you don't have full control over your character, and that's why I backed off on it. Um, Does your character have Dark Urges? Yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. And if you don't give in to it, then things happen without your control. And a couple things happened that I really didn't care for and basically noped my way out of it. Um, it, it might be an interesting thing to do on a, a playthrough where I'm not trying to get everything and, and you know, fully be a hero. But I don't know. It may just not be for me all around. We'll see. Um, outside of outside of Baldur's Gate 3, um, I went old school and I played a little bit of the original Kingdom Hearts. I'm uh, I just left Destiny Isles and you know started the good fight, met Donald and Goofy, and got my gummy ship, and I'm getting ready to start off uh, on the first world. Um, and then STO because I'm doing the event and trying to get the Proto Star stuff because. You know, the Protostar is my favorite ship in all of Trek, and anything that has to deal with that, I want that ship. But I'm with the cancellation, I'm a little afraid that we'll never get it. But we'll see. Actually, because of how tight uh, Nickelodeon is, there's probably better odds that we will get it now versus before. I suppose it kind of depends on if anybody picks it up. To, to run season two and whatnot, which I have not heard any anything about that. So we'll see. Um, let's see. I'll pass the buck to Tabitha. Well, I have been continuing to play a whole ton of the uh, Paleo open beta, and uh, I've been having a lot of fun with that. Um. Outside of that, I've been uh, I've been continuing my Dragon Daycare dailies in World of Warcraft, and um, and uh, doing my uh, doing my daily event stuff in Star Trek Online. <clears throat> um, and not much else there. Not much else outside of that. All right. And the torch gets handed over. That was fast. Uh, um, I've been playing STO, 
playing with appearances of ships, as people can see. I, I'm, I'm once again in the appearance editor. Um, because I was not sure what, what this ship would look like. I, I thought I'd go in here and see what, what appearances are available. And apparently, you only have the Excelsior, which is fine. I mean, it is the Excelsior, too. Um, outside of doing the, the Space Barbie, um, obviously doing the daily, stuff like that. Um, I still play WoW. We, we are apparently now taking darn near fresh level 70s into heroic raid content. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan, but it, it's fine. I'm not the raid leader. It's not my decision. Um, let's see. I, I've been also playing a fair amount of Satisfactory. Uh, for, for, for those that don't know what the game is, it's kind of a factory building game. Um, there are resource nodes around the pl planet um, that you are stuck on. Well, te technically you only have a, it's a very large map. I mean, it's only a section of a planet, but uh, it is still a very large map. Um, and you are essentially to gather the resources and eventually build machines that will gather for you. And then you can make, you can, you start single, like crafting at a bench and then you can progress up to machines doing it for you. Um, I am currently looking at making a, a mega factory and I have set up a train station that, uh, is the largest I've ever built. It has 20 delivery points at it which is a bit silly. <laughs> There's only about 10 resources in the entire game. So I have two for every, every resource. Um, yeah, that, that's been what I've been up to. Uh, right now I'm about to paint, paint a ship because I, 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 I don't know. Well, I love Star Trek ships and whatnot. I love giving them my flair. Well, what's the week been like for STO then, Grebog? Oh, the week for STO. They, they've had news and things. <laughs> so News and things? Yeah, news and things. Um, they, they announced the MUDs taking a cruise bundle. It, it shows up today. Um, there's going to be a sale on it for 50% off, like they normally do for most MUD bundles. And it's uh, starting today also and goes until September 7th. Uh, the ships in this bundle, um, you, there is a 23rd century ship pack, which has the Temporal Light Cruiser, the D7 Temporal Battle Cruiser, the Talis Temporal Warbird. Um, so you get three ships out, out of one token that you get, well, that you can choose in this pack. And yes, that means you can get all three of the ships on all, all your characters. It's not like, yeah. You can just reclaim that token again and again and keep getting all the, the different ships. Um, another choice is the Jim'Hadar Light Battle Cruiser. And then the final choice is the Walker Class Light Cruiser. Um, well, yeah, for ships. There's still the 50, lobby, or 50 Master Keys, 300 Lobby, and I think some ultimate tech upgrades it's of the value of the pack well well will vary the the least uh, impressive ship in the entire bundle is the walker class from everything i've read seen done it is also a low b ship so you can probably get it fairly cheap anyway off of the exchange if you were really wanting it so they they put in the walker and other bundles that you can pick up uh, and get, get basically the same ship and better setups. Um, of the, the three ship pack, that is probably the most beneficial. Um, the Temporal Light Cruiser, I, I actually have this. It looks like the Constitution original series. Um, so it, it flies well. It's a, it, it's a good... I, I really enjoyed flying that ship. Um, I still fly it on Grebog as... as Right now, um, though I'm not on Grebog right now, but uh, he he is the one that has the Temporal Light Cruiser. Um, I I was fortunate to get out of a box. 
Uh, the D7 is the one that is everyone's been like raving about for decades. Well, maybe not decades, but you know, ever since it was put into game, people have decades, been raving about huh? it being one of the top ships. So it, it is, it is a good ship. And the Talis, you can technically buy the Romulan legendary bundle and get a better variant, or uh, you know, get a legendary variant and get all the stuff that the it offers. But I mean, if, yeah. It, it comes out of the three pack, so you can get it this way too. But yeah, that that is the um, bundle. I want to jump in here real quick and just let everybody know that the Temporal Light Cruiser is one of only two tier six ships that can use the Exeter skin. Um, so if you have the Exeter skin, which was a tier, I think it was a tier three or tier four uh, version of the Constitution. Um, if you bought that back in the day and you have that skin, there are only two tier six ships that use it. And that's the legendary constitution and this one, the temporal light cruiser. Yeah. It, the D seven. Yeah. Well, you get the, the, the nice old nostalgic D seven. look. Um, not that I'm trying to talk people into buying the bundle. I personally am not buying the bundle. I don't feel it's worth it but that's just me of from what I've heard and what I've like, like in my, I I'm, I'm kind of in agreement with, with what I've heard is that the best value in this bundle is to get the 23rd century ship back, the Gemitard light battle cruiser, and then take the 50 uh, master keys. Cause the, the Walker is just that disappointing. Unless you want it for appearances, but that it's it apparently you're you likely won't be happy flying it other than for the looks. So, um, they announced another red alert event. This runs uh, from the 31st to the 14th, so next week. Um, the reward is a ultimate tech upgrade, specialization point, and experimental ship upgrade token. Same thing we just had before the current event. This will be a placeholder, um, but here's Cabby to talk about what might be after that placeholder. Maybe. Oh, Tabby. Oh, the 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 big the big patch download. Yeah. Well, we've got something coming. Uh, we just don't know what. Uh, well. Because uh, we're 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 thinking the next big content patch is coming up, but we just don't know what it is yet. Um, did did we ever get any like theories going on what it is yet? I, I think uh, we'll get a big reveal on our our next big bad. That that's yeah, my theory. We had like uh, well, uh, like how many how many gigs was that was that uh was that patch download? That patch three. It like was three, three and gig, a half, three, somewhere three and there. a half gig download. With nothing, with no announcements, nothing said. They've been quiet. All too yeah. quiet. A little, little bit too quiet. So yeah, no, there's there's definitely something something coming. And uh let's see, um when when do we think that they would announce something? Uh like what so, events <clears throat> So next week starts the Galaxy Goes to Red Alert, and we are also getting, isn't that the next 10 forward? Won't that be next week? Uh, maybe. I, I've lost track because they don't, they've been missing more than they've been doing. Well, I, I believe that we should get a 10 forward weekly, well, monthly, whatever it is these days, next week. So uh, I imagine they'll announce some stuff when that comes up, and... At bare minimum, it'll be the week after that that we'll get an announcement because the the placeholder will be done and they'll have to be doing whatever they're going to do after that. So we should know something relatively soon. The only conjecture I've really heard is that it will continue the current storyline. So um, Kings and Queens. So we had Wish Upon a Star. It'll be whatever's next. Hopefully they will tell us where our wayward ship, like what universe our wayward ship ended up in and go from there. 
Okay, I All don't right. own the Constitution 3, and it's letting me pick the Constitution 3 as a uh, hall appearance. Ooh. As in, well, as material, the hall material. But not the appearance. Right? Not the appearance. Gotcha. All right, so our primary target this week, uh, we decided we would revisit something that we covered in episode 14. Um with a twist. So we're, we're going to talk a little bit about crafting, uh, re-engineering, and upgrading. We just had an upgrade weekend, so the focus is kind of on upgrading, but we can't really talk about upgrading without telling you guys how to get gear and how to re-injure it. I re-injure. All of a sudden, I can't talk. Anyway, to start us off, here's Tabitha. All right, crafting. So... First up, how do you even get crafting materials? Well, first up, you've got the Zen store, which, I mean, if you ask me, there's better things to spend your Zen on than crafting materials, especially when you have so many other easy ways to get crafting materials. Uh, the other way is through mini games and missions. Uh, if you've run any missions in the game, you'll, you'd, you'll have seen the, like, the little nodes the, uh, through which you can game, uh, you can gain the crafting materials through the little mini game, and we're gonna run a mission to show you how to do that real quick. Uh, are we gonna run that now? Yep, I'm All already right. in here waiting on you guys. Okay. Um, oh, it's not letting me pop right out of here. So return to sector space. Here's Simon. I didn't even Here's know Johnny. That you, oh, wait. I didn't even know that you could actually spend Zen on crafting materials. Uh, the R and D packs give you. Oh, oh yes, materials. yes, yes. Of course. You can't you can't buy them directly. That would be really cool, actually. So if you like, there's one rare thing you need. Um, they don't do it that way, but the R and D packs will give you crafting material. Alrighty. Here's Tabby. My dear friend Kamarga. I think I'm pretty sure that this mission will have both face and ground once we get to the next map. And for a while on here there's no combat, so we should be able to show this off without too much difficulty and then we can move on. Not that most people that play this game don't already know this, but hey. Just in case. We've arrived on the outskirts of the system. There's a large field of rock. Okay, so if you hit your V button, you'll do a scan. The scan will point you to any anomalies in the area. I'm sorry, Tabby, I'm kind of walking on your toes here. This should be your cup of tea. Readings coming oh, in. Oh, it's now. okay. Large well, uh, well, pretty much the scan points you to any clickables, which include quest objectives. So it might point you to those first. Cosmosoans, they're beautiful, intriguing. And that's kind of what it's doing. So this is one of the mini games, this waveform modulation, but this is not for crafting material. That's for the actual mission here. On the Gekli before we we might have to get to the next map. Data's coming in from the... I hope somebody more maneuverable than me can do it. I'm trying. I'm not really... I mean, we're in the same ship. <laughs> we're getting close-up readings from all of the creatures. There we go. Stay close. They're treating us like one of their own. They're trying okay. to talk to us with their radio waves. Here, I'm going to hit that you. Was incredible. <laughs> what At least we can skip all the cutscenes in here and just move right along. All right, my thing isn't pointing to anything. My, like I said, we may have to go to the next map because there, there is another map we go to. 
we just got to make the Geckly happy real quick. Like that. There's some kind of... All right, next area. I know there are some on the ground, because I used to farm this for Endeavors anytime the Endeavor was, you know, get crafting material on the ground. Sensors are reading a swarm of comets. This comet is mostly ice and dust. There are... Oh, mini game, mini game. Shoot. But not the one that we want. Nope. But as a uh, as a pro tip with all the mini games, you don't have to use the little on screen arrow buttons. You can use the arrow buttons on your keyboard and it's a lot easier. The core sample shows signs um, of magnetic That's what radioactive. is used for the dilithium mining. This comic may have seen some interesting well, parts in this one. Well, at least you get to see all three mini games in this. Oh, you've already finished that one. Thank you, sir. The planet is geothermal in nature. Its surface is partially molten. Okay, so w I was wrong. This mission apparently does not offer any uh, space. Data is no life forms you can do a patrol, and I think there's some in the patrols even. Most players are going to know what they are anyway, because you run into them everywhere. There they are. But even even so, I apologize. I I'm so Could upset you with you. How could you be wrong uh, like I am this? Furious. The display must be a form I can of communication. <laughs> I didn't realize that life forms could exist in this fashion. Oh, uh, looks like harvest material space. Uh, the best places to go are Archer System Control, Karaya System Control, Fluid Dynamic, Fluid Dynamics. Diplomatic orders. Okay, now we get to be down. 30, 40, 50, 60. 90. There's one. I see one right off to the right. Yep. So, this so is in the case you didn't know what harvesting materials looks like, there's one right there. No, no. There's also one behind us. Yeah, I used to farm, like I said, the ground ones here, because it's easy. They're everywhere. And then you play the mini game and collect what you get. And then sometimes if you complete the mini game, it will give you rarer material. So there is that. Okay, that's all we were going to show here. We didn't get to do the space ones. Yep. Zero and I just wanted to area. show the mini game itself. And uh, the easiest and bestest way to get uh, to get materials is salvaging. When you uh, when you uh, when you run stuff and you collect loot and uh, you, you just uh, open up your inventory with the upgrade salvage button. The salvage and salvage all unprotected items a okay. aka ma make sure to have your the stuff you want to keep protected or you will accidentally salvage them yep and as a pro tip any uh you can look at anything uh anything that's in this salvage window here that you decide that you do want to keep you can right click it that in this window and set it to protect and it'll disappear from that window. So if uh, so, if you uh, so if you open the salvage window, you see things that you actually want to keep. You can just right-click it in this window, click Protect, and it'll be fine. But once uh, once you have this window open, hit Salvage All Unprotected Items, and all that stuff goes poof, poof, changes the materials, and drops into your R&D tab. And look at all of these lovely R&D materials. And that's ultimately the best way to do it. Because, I mean, you pick up all kinds of stuff. 
as you're running missions and TFOs and everything, don't sell the stuff, salvage it. And just sell the, sell the stuff that you can't salvage. Oh, I've got a endeavor to harvest materials on the ground. All right. Um, oh, you're st crafting, Tabby. Ah, I, I was going to skip over that. I'm sorry. Yep, we, we both almost missed it. So with crafting, uh, you can have two omni beams one that is crafted and one other set omni beam and the crafted omni beam you get uh you you make it through let me here through r d beams item space weapon arc beam array and uh, it can only be crafted in Mark 12 quality. And it requires a metric ton of materials. But yeah, and it takes 20 hours to craft. But you can make your own, you can buy it off the exchange. And then you can you can pair that up with a uh, set uh, a set bonus like Say I have the Trilithium Enhanced Omnidirectional Phaser Beam from the, uh, that's Beyond the Nexus, isn't it? Uh, yes, I believe Pretty so. Pretty sure that's Beyond the Nexus. So you can uh, pair up a, uh, so you can pair up those two, have two Omni Beams on the, uh, in the aft slots of your, sh aft slots of your ship and be good to go. The new set sort of changes that a little. Yeah, because don't they count as a crafted? Yes. So like, you can so have the... one of the new set ones and or one of the one of the new ones that comes with the new uh, with the new items and a set one. So like the protostar with the um the new Tetrion one from the uh, from the set piece uh, a little bit uh, a little bit back, and then the new protostar one is going to be like that. Uh, you can you can pair that up with another set, so yeah. you can have two phaser set bonuses, set bonus omnis. That's going to be wild. Oh, While you're throwing the war cores at people. We're going to do a build on that next week. Yes, we are. Yeah, both the Tholian and the Protostar sets Omnis. Uh, yeah. Count as crafted this time around. I, I find it interesting. Though I still don't understand why there's the limitation on how many Omnis, even crafted, we can have. Uh, where are we going? I'm going back down to get some more. Oh. I need to harvest more materials for my endeavor. <laughs> yeah, because like there's a built in limitation oh, with Omnis and that they do less damage. So there's a built in limitation that makes you want to like avoid them if you can, uh, like. On cruisers, in which you're going to be doing a broadside build, you're probably going to not use Omnis in favor of Arrays, since you're going to be broadsiding any everything anyway. So I don't see why they, they don't lift that. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like turrets. 
You can have as many turrets as you want on the rear. Yeah, why can't you have why can't you have as many on these? But anyway. Yeah. Mo moving on. Do I have something I can re-engineer quick? Probably. I've got an Omni I can give you that I, I just made. I have a spiral here. I'm going to re-engineer this spiral wave disruptor beam. All right. So once you've crafted stuff and once you have it, it may not, when you craft it, it, it gets random on what stats it has on it. Like what, what modifiers, as you can see, this one has a special spiral one, which means it cannot be re-engineered off of it. Um, same with Omni's, the, uh, the arc cannot be re-engineered off of it because otherwise it, then it wouldn't go 360. Um, <laughs> then it wouldn't be an Omni beam. Uh, so, so there are certain special ones that you can't re-engineer off. However, if you have something that has stuff like accuracy times two, not, not probably the best, uh, modifiers to have on here. So what you can do, you, you like, if, like I said, I showed here, you can just bottom of your inventory, the upgrade salvage, but you go to the engineering tab this time and re-engineer, or you can right click on the item and in the list, click on the re-engineer there. They, they let you lock and unlock every, what you want to in. So the different modifiers, like the two accuracy ones, I don't want, I can click unlock and it will let me re-roll randomly to find out something different. Um, and let's say one of them gets something I want, like it just did. I want to keep the damage one, so I lock it. And then I can hit randomize again, and it will roll again on the other one. Makes it very handy on trying to get the, the modifiers you're looking for. Um, so as you can see, it is random, and, and it can cause you to spend dilithium until you get what you want. So. But uh, there are some, do I have any of the fancy consoles on me? Probably not. Th there is some complaints. Oh, it's probably in my, here. I'm going to go up and on in my, my account bank, I have some. The, the modifiers on the engineering, the new, well, maybe not, not just engineering, all on the new advanced consoles. Um, the, if I go to Starship Bridge, I can get to my account bank, right? I don't know. What are you trying to pull up? I wanted to pull out my one of those consoles just to show... Just to show the, uh, not library, do to do, do access account bank. Here we go. People can um, be amazed by the junk I keep in my inventory. So when I re-engineer this one, the big, I've, I've heard some big, big complaints. Now I probably will not change this one. I might sell it, but it, as you can see, you, even without unlocking, you can mouse over. The, the, the modifier that currently is there and it shows you the entire list of all possible modifiers and as you can see with these advanced consoles that's a hefty list <laughs> um and, and here is something to note on some of these consoles pay attention to whether it says polaron or just P O L or, or something to that effect. Cause P P O L is always going to be Polaron resistance while Polaron, the full word is for Polaron damage increase. So Ooh, like that's the, uh, that's a, that's important. Cause like there's plasma in here and then there's P L A, which is, Plasma resistance, which I mean, if you're going to be build a resistance build, it's good to know that it's in there, but typically people are looking for the plus phaser damage plus plasma damage. 
it be very clear on what it says before you you know yeah also i don't know that i would want to re-engineer one of these consoles for the fact that it's got i think i counted once over 23 uh, of the potential modifiers which means getting the one you want is going to be a pain in your butt but good luck um typically okay for, for the modifiers you want it will also vary on the item so let's say let's look at my ground here for a real quick i have here the rising kit uh which has k perf slash weapon then k perf oh did i screw it up it also has a proc on here but i can't re-engineer off i think i might have screwed mine up oh well because i think you can get it get an, another k perf on here um than what i've got but i re-engineered off all the other stuff and went for k perf when i when i first grabbed it um so for for kit modules you, you typically want to go k perf um because that's kit performance because the better your kit performance the better your kit modules will do their damage and such it increases their damage greatly on ship weapons a lot of times people apparently i haven't re-engineered all mine a lot of people go for damage times four and then like crit d slash damage if it for the other um though I, I it also depends on where you are on your critical damage on whether you need crit eight critical hit or critical damage um so that could vary i would say crit d slash damage or crit h slash damage would be okay um but yeah typically the damage damage times anything is always better than at least i it seems to be it seems to stack better uh what other what other modifiers you can't really engineer consoles except for crafted ones um yeah you, you can't a lot of like only it's typically crafted or or dropped items if it comes in a set or a from a mission odds are that it won't be re-engineerable so you may be stuck with what it is which is potentially good to note um when, when planning out builds so is that it are you ready to talk about upgrading? Sure. Okay. First of all, I found a, a space thing here. This is Rubidium Ore. So this is how you would collect that. It's this little marker you're looking for. You have to match the lines up for the mini game, just like you did on ground. And you get your... Actually, I got, I got three rares. Three Rubidium. Nice. Okay. So I just wanted to knock that out since we were talking about that. So upgrading. How do you get upgrade tokens? There are several ways to get upgrade tokens. And here we go. So this is your upgrade menu. You can right click an item and uh, hit upgrade, or you can open this window manually and drag something over here, however you want to do it. You want to click on the upgrade spot. I happen to have a basic beam weapons tech upgrade. It will add 2000 technology points. You can use it on beam weapons or beam consoles, depending. Um, when you click on this, it will tell you that it's going to go from Mark II to Mark III. And this thing right here is what you're looking for. This has a dilithium cost. All of the green. Uh, upgrades will have that. There are some higher quality of blues and purples that will also have that, but pay attention to that dilithium cost. Mostly you want to find upgrades that don't have that. 
Um, let's see. You can also get, there are event rewards um, that are, are specific. You can get some out of the Zen store um, occasionally from uh, lock boxes and whatnot. They're a little rare, but they can show up. Uh, you can get them from duty officer missions or from uh, Armada missions. That up. Sometimes those can be, or Admiralty. Sorry, I said Armada, meant Admiralty. But you can find them as rewards in here as well. Uh, usually it's the blue or green ones that will come out of here, and they'll have a Dilithium cost. So again, not cost effective, but you can do it. Um, recruits. Sometimes the recruits on the recruit itself will give you upgrade tokens. Those usually are not account unlocks. Um, the big one are, are the events, because sometimes um, during an event, they'll hand out uh, packs, and when you open a pack, it will have upgrade tokens in there. Those are usually specific uh, to the event, and they don't have a Dilithium cost, but they're not as good as the Phoenix upgrades. The Phoenix upgrades are about the best that you're going to find in the game. They used to be better, but even with the nerf, um, these are still the best ones that you're going to find anywhere. Um, you get these by going to... Ooh, I don't actually have enough here. Let me fix that real quick. Teach me to pay attention to stuff. Fix that. There we go. Okay, now I can buy some. So you get those here. Uh, a pack of 10 costs you 40,000 dilithium. When you get them, you can just double click to get all that you can. Of course, you're looking for the rarer ones, which I am not having much luck on here. Nope, it's being stingy today. Anyway, you'll go to whatever. What if you get an epic one, you probably want to get a ship, but. You scroll all the way to the bottom and you can translate these down to get as many rares as you can. And then the very bottom of the rare is the Phoenix Universal Tech Upgrades. That's what you want. So, oh, let me pop that back out. This So the green one gave you 2,000. The Phoenix one is going to give you 38,000. And then you just apply it and you can apply them over and over again as you go up in rank the the damage and effectiveness of the item will increase as you go up in rarity which i didn't get a, a rarity upgrade but as you go up in rarity usually you get an extra uh, modifier so like right now this one if you go to the re-engineer it has three when it goes up in rank, it'll have four, and then it, when it comes epic, it'll have a fifth. Um, and I usually re-engineer them all to damage, but again, as it goes up in quality, you'll get more of these to, to play with. Some items, you want to play with that every upgrade. Like, I know the uh, kit frame from Ryza, you want to change, you want to re-engineer it every time you go up in quality. That's the only way you're going to get all the K-Perf on there. Otherwise, it locks you out of one of the K-Perf upgrades. Um, the so Okay, so you saw what I just did when I was upgrading that from 12 to 15. It took about three of the Phoenix upgrades per uh, mark to, to go up to the next level. Mark does matter. So if you start with a lower mark, like this one here, this is a Mark II item I crafted at the beginning of the show. Um, so just hitting one, let's see, it went all the way to three, went all the way to four, went all the way to five, and I got a quality upgrade. Okay, so it took me all the way to mark eight off one Phoenix token, and it gave me a rarity upgrade. It went to very rare. Um, so I can plug another one in. That one only took me up 
uh, two levels. It went to 10. And then it goes back to what you saw before, where it's going to be two or three to go up a level. To get all the way to five. And I got another quality upgrade. So this is fully upgraded now. That's, I was not expecting that. There you guys go. You saw how that worked. All the way to, wow, to epic. That's cool. And that's why a lot of people say to do the the Mark Twos, because yeah. it doesn't cost you that much on the upgrade side, but but you could get it all the way up epiced out, uh, getting wow, it to was... Mark Fifteen. I I actually have not had that happen in quite a while, so um, I'm I am reading that. Uh, so we're getting a bonus marks weekend next week. Oh no! I thought I'm. I, I you know I would have cracked you up in the middle of everything with what I said. I was focused. Okay, I'm trying to trying to do my thing. Um, let's see. Went over that. Okay, showed the examples of upgrading. So my stuff is done. Um, that is how you upgrade now. What happens on a upgrade weekend, which we just had, is those numbers that you saw, like the 2,000 or the 34,000, those get doubled. Um, unfortunately, they never made it so that those weekends increase your chance to get a rarity upgrade, but it makes it much easier to get the mark upgrade. So you use less to get to mark 15, and then you can do the normal chance to upgrade to get you know, to Epic, if that's what you want to do. How, however, it technically does help you with your rarity because so a Phoenix upgrade always adds one Phoenix upgrade adds 1% every time you use it. Um, so if you're using and, and then whenever you hit the end and it pushes over to the attempt to get to the Epic, or, well, the next rarity, let's say if it was Mark 15 and you were just trying to roll it into an epic, it's going to take less upgrades to hit that end of the bar to roll that chance again. So you, you technically get more re-roll chances, I guess would be a good way to put it for rarity. There, I pushed. Uh, I pushed the Omni I made up to very rare, or ultra rare, so it did get one uh, upgrade there. Unfortunately, I don't think I have enough to push it up to epic. But there you go. I'm gonna drop those two items into the fleet bank as well. These two crafted things that I just upgraded, they're gonna go in the fleet bank. So if there's cool. anybody watching that needs some phaser stuff, those will be in the bank later. Um, phasers. Phasers. Yeah. Phasers. Um, I do not have the event done yet. So before we end our show, do you guys want to run the event? Sure. I absolutely do. Okay. We'll go play around. Let me switch ships again real quick before I queue us up for that. Oh, I can't do it from here. All right, I'll leave sector. Or I'll leave, go to sector. There we go. <clears throat> Having all kinds of trouble talking tonight, guys. Apparently, I'm, I don't know, tired, something? It's fine. Uh, right card, yes, um, both uh, Nicodus and I are flying the Terran Lexington. Uh, I was. I, I switched to the Terran Eagle. I am switching back for this, uh, though, because I need my, uh, there we go, Calypso. I need my fire at will build for this. Uh, I'm flying something different because I'm silly. I could get in my Lexington. That Why don't we all take Lexingtons? Uh-oh. She's calling you out. You what did I it? name my Lexington? That's going to be the question. I'm on a load screen and I'll switch as soon as I get in. Okay, I'll wait to queue us until you get in. So uh, I I went with Calypso. Um, 
I don't I don't really have a reason for it. I just thought it would be a cool name for what is supposed to be a command ship. I mean, Calypso is a god and a god of the sea. Granted, you know, we're not on the ocean, but we are in a sea of stars, so it seemed to fit. Oh, that's what mine's called. I forgot. It's the ISS Archangel. And then I actually named my eagle uh, the Nausinus, which in mythology is one of Calypso's children. It, it seemed to make sense. Since you can see the eagle right there at the butt of the ship. All right. Sorry about that. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. Wait. This says Alexa. Yeah. Mm. We woo. We woo. We woo. Is that a oh, console yeah, or do we... The small ship, uh, I think it has been recently added and uh, only noticed it earlier. What's that? Was somebody flying the small ship earlier? Oh, yeah. I, I flipped Oh, yeah, the, the Aquarius. Um, oh, the Aquarius. The Eagle is, is I think, the, what they, they, the, the, they named the T6 variant. Yeah, the, the Aquarius was the original name of the little ship that poops out of the back of, of the uh, Odyssey class. Um, but for the Terran variant, it's a Terran Eagle. I, I bought the Terran bundle, so I ended up with all three of them. That's because he likes to Terran it up. I do. You're Ooh, not wrong. That's Terranable. And if you didn't, if our, our viewers didn't see puns coming, then they don't know us well enough. <laughs> Welcome Ain't to that the Gamma truth. Hydrant. In this, the scenario will be modern. Go away. Um, I missed the comment about the cutting beam up there with Dwayne. Um, the, the cutting beam does have a 360 degree arc, but it is not, it does not deal uh, energy damage. It deals kinetic damage and is not technically an Omni beam. Yeah, which is what what I put basically in the chat too. It, it is I a good that. way to get your 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 Omni going, but uh, it won't benefit from your consoles that you uh, unless you use all damage consoles. Then it does. Here, well, let's get out the Aquarius. See, I don't have that console. I never bought any of the tier five versions of the Odyssey. I have the free one that they gave out for the event when the Odyssey was introduced, which was tier five, but I never bought any of the tier five ones. So I have, and I'm not sure how, an Agony Phaser Lance. Do we all have that? Get ready for yeah, that's wild. part of the ship itself. Yeah, yeah, okay. that, that, that's, that's like built into the ship. <laughs> yeah, you still have your phaser lance there, Grebog. I'm surprised I don't have two phaser lances. I'm surprised you don't, too. It must have been a while since you played on that one. Uh, Actually, it's probably that uh, I was setting this up as a tank and needed the console for stop targeting the doomsday thing. It's not over yet. The next wave is away. coming. We're, we're moving on to round three here. S synchronized turning here, Tap? No. <laughs> we got Republic ships. We're taking on the Romulans. Target shield has failed. Our allies. Yeah, or are they? Holograms. Not tonight, they're not. One. Almost ran into Simon there. It's not and over yet. The next wave is coming. Okay, here we go. Fire it will away. Poor Riker. 
Everybody fire at will. Data turns around and shoots Riker. No, the nothing from the incoming. peanut gallery. Fire at Lucutus? What? No. The acceleration Fire at the peanut gallery? What? <laughs> I mean, that oh, might be a. The... This is such a silly, silly effix. Yeah, we got the turn radius effect going. And, and speed. <laughs> the ships just don't turn right when this is active. The next wave is incoming. Enemy thing. assault incoming. Survive the onslaught. This is our last one. Oh, and of course it would be the Iconians or the Heralds. I'm going to try and protect the uh, Kobayashi as best I can. Helpers. I still am not turning right. It's like the affix completely broke my my inertial know, right? t m turns. Wow, look at all these enemies. That's crazy. It, it's fine. We we got this. We got a probe coming in. Never mind. It blowed up. You know what really makes this cheesy is if you come in here with a uh, uh, jelly. Do I still have an Aquarius out there? It's not over yet. Or is it the dead? Wave is coming. All that on, was a good run, guys. Wow, the Maru's health is like what at ninety percent still? Yeah, that was that was a good run for not having a jelly sitting right on top of it. Well, I mean, what do you want when you've got at least three Terran Lexingtons? <laughs> That's true. That's very true. All right. So for uh, anybody who's interested, next week we will be featuring the Lexingtons again. Uh, we're going to go over a, a collaborative phaser build. Um, we haven't actually decided on who's doing what parts of the ship yet. So I can't tell you, but it'll be a collaboration. In the I'm Lexington doing the port nacelle of a phaser build. <laughs> only the port nacelle, not not yeah, anything only the port else. <laughs> I'll, I'll take care of the Aquarius. Uh, there you go. And um, Nicodus has the rest of the ship. I, I got to do the rest of the ship. Okay, fair enough. I mean, technically, with the Aquarius now, I, 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 I there's a whole another ship build there. As long as it's phasers, because that's what we're doing. It's phasers. Phasors. Phasors. <laughs> All right. Did I forget anything, guys? Um, we are, are going to raid somebody, right? Sure. We raid okay. somebody. So next week, but... phaser build on the Lexington. Otherwise, I will see you out there. Have fun. Be safe. And don't set yourselves on fire. Uh, live long and prosper, everybody, and we'll be right back.